Welcome to Dare to Dream. This is Debbie Dashinger. And today's show features the amazing Sarah R. Adams, who is a multidimensional coach and healer, to say the least. <laughs> Dare to Dream podcast has been nominated for Two People's Choice Podcast Awards and a Webby Award. Welp Magazine lists Dare to Dream as one of the top 20 best podcasts to listen to this year. And the podcast won the COVR Award for Best Radio and Podcast Show. Thank you guys so much for believing in me and the work I do. I couldn't be here without you. And so I'm going to give you a little nudge right here at the beginning. Please make sure to subscribe. Please like, please comment. All of those matrix actually make a huge deal in what I do and get a lot more people here to watch and listen. Whether you're on podcast or you're watching on Spotify or YouTube, I am so grateful you are on this journey with me. So I am a book writing coach. I help spiritual messengers get the book out of them and get it published and write a darn good book in the meantime. I also have a company that takes books to a guaranteed international best-selling status. I do all the heavy lifting for the author. And finally, I interview folks, as you know, and I teach spiritual messengers how to be interviewed. So it's your time. You came here to shine your light. If you are indeed ready to get more visible and get your work, your being, your message out into the world, I have some free gifts for you and you can learn how now. Go to debbiedashinger.com slash gift. It's D-E-B-B-I-D-A-C-H-I-N-G-E-R.com slash gift. Well, my guest today is somebody I've been waiting a little bit about to connect with, and I'm so excited she's here for y'all and for me. She is indeed a multidimensional healer. Sarah has experienced seeing abductions and seeing angels who aided her. Her awakened consciousness increased as she got older. She experienced the supernatural and past lives in Egypt and Atlantis, telepathy, weather abnormalities, Oh, feelings, feeling others' emotions, remote viewing, quantum leaping, and time travel are the alternate realities Sarah has experienced. Sarah works with clients all around the world in intuitive healing to heighten the frequency of the temple and precious bodies we have been given. She's made TV appearances on Gaia TV, including Beyond Belief, Buzzsaw, and ancient civilizations, as well as Coast to Coast AM, Vice TV, The Bases Project, co-hosting the Divine Truth Show on Revolution, Revolution Radio, and many others. Sarah Adams continues to be a major force in the world of enlightenment while healing many people around the world. And if you'd like to learn more about her, go to her website, Sarah R adams.com. And with that, I welcome Sarah to the Dare to Dream show. It's great to have you. Thank you have, for having me on, Debbie. I'm so excited. I'm, I just am like so excited about this because I feel like today we're really going to have an amazing time empowering people. And that's, this is my passion in life. <laughs> Yeah, we're so aligned with that. Me too. I want to bring a different conversation. I want it to be cutting edge, not the same old, same old. And so I am grateful because I know the kind of things you talk about. I could have stopped during at least five times during your bio alone. It's that fascinating. So I want to give folks an understanding of you because it's funny that your bio talks about how your abilities have come on as you've gotten older, but you're so young. You are so young, <laughs> right? So you've been at this for a long time. Have Has this been your life experience since childhood? Oh, yes. So I actually remember living in Atlantis and I remember being a priestess there. I remember like two billion years back and uh, that all the planets were inhabited. Mars was inhabited. Venus was inhabited and everyone was what I call, you know, I turned multidimensional. They could travel realms, speak to spirits, um, heal themselves, heal others, keep the, the planet they were living on in a high frequency. So there was no deserts, there was no droughts, you know, it, and everyone was connected via their hearts and they were telepathic. 
So I actually came into this lifetime with all of that memory. And I chose to keep, come into this timeline, this specific timeline to bring back a lot of that knowledge. And I willingly chose that. And I talked to the ancient council of light and they were saying, you know, that humanity, humanity needs to learn that they are divine beings. They are much more than this physical body. They need to learn that they have the ability to channel energy. And when they gather together and do so, they can heal the oceans. They can heal, you know, the entire planet of pollution and they can heal all the distorted energies and bring that back into a state of what I call this divine symphony that we have fallen mm. from. So mm -hmm. I came to earth and this has been my experience, you know, because I've never been disconnected. I have experiences every day. Yesterday, I had a lot of astral projection the day before I actually floated out of my body through the walls and I'm near the Bermuda triangle and I floated over the Bermuda triangle and there was this spiral portal and I was about to go through it. And then I realized I had to help out some people who needed to clear some, you know, denser energy. So I went and did that instead. So I'm always having these experiences. What do you think would have happened if you had gone into that portal? I went, you know, okay, so. I live in West Palm now and it's gorgeous, but I think I travel. I'm, I'm trying to remember time because one thing with me, I have all these experiences and I also go to a place where there's no time. So I never know what time it is. That's, the, <laughs> that's an experience of mine. But uh, I think it was like two years back. I traveled here to visit and I was in Miami and I floated out of my body and there was this uh, like this golden spare and it was kind of like flat though and I stood on there and I was teleported into Atlantis into the energetic system of Atlantis and I spoke to beings there I also spoke to some priests and priestesses that were talking about how we needed to awaken humanity to their divine abilities so that they can help elevate the frequency of the planet and that like I said I think when we first started this conversation I was saying that that's what the ETs were expressing to me that's what the angels have expressed to me that's what <laughs> the priests and priestesses of Atlantis have expressed to me and that's what I know from my personal experience yeah perfect so you did mention that while channeling they had mentioned the rainbow light pour rainbow light into the earth talk about that because this tribe that we're with right now, these people listening and watching, they know, they get this, but the how, well, how do I do it? How do I take action? I can donate money to an animal organization and that's not belittling anything, by the way, all the beautiful things we all do. But I think we're clear, we're at a critical point for the ascension of humanity, for new humanity and the new earth. How can we align with that to actually improve that timeline to heal much more rapidly? And this is a great question. And it's also why I teach multidimensionality because multidimensionality is about taking care of the physical body. It's the temple, you know, and we need to clear out the toxins. We need to give it the nutrients and love that it needs. We need to, to listen to our emotions because our emotions have divine messages for mm. us. And I think a lot of people just suppress that and then that leads to disease and that leads to a lot of problems. So I work on that level. I also work on building up the aura and the chakra system. And then I also work on, you know, clearing ancestral karma. And once we really start to do a lot of self work, we step into these abilities and they just start lighten, lighten up. We don't even need to focus on trying to activate them. I believe as we have more energy that comes through us, that activates our junk DNA, it activates our entire brain, activates our entire system, and we become multidimensional. We start seeing spirits, we start um, being telepathic, we start astral projection, projecting, we start um, having outer body experiences, we start communicating with other beings, we start to, to listen to the planet, and the planet will tell you, you know, like it's told me that its frequency needs to go higher. And we are kind of like the captains of the ship, literally. That's what I was told. And um, so, my whole knowledge about the rainbow light, messages I got about the rainbow light, there's some codes in religions about the rainbow light. And let me just say that religion has got a lot of their 
frightens from much more ancient prophecies. If you do your research, and there's a story in the Bible about Joseph, and he had a coat of many colors. And because he had a coat of many colors, he walked and talked with God. Now, the coat of many colors, was it a physical coat I was shown? I was shown it was the aura that he had all the rainbow colors in his aura. And I was also shown that people who are sick, who are depressed, who are sad, they only have like black, gray um, colors in their aura, icky, green, or yellow. They don't have the rainbow colors. And uh, working with thousands of people, I, because I can sense auras, I can feel auras, I can see auras. I would start to work at transmuting those energies with them. And then we would bring in the rainbow colors. Yellow represents happiness and joy. A red represents passion, blue represents, you know, being in a state of calmness, um, violet represents higher spirituality. So as we rebuild their aura with these rainbow colors, they would start to have the, all these supernatural spiritual experiences and their system would start to light up. So I believe those are each color is a specific higher frequency. And we actually have the ability to cultivate those frequencies within ourselves. I believe that when we do so, this will eradicate, when we learn how to do so, this will eradicate all disease. This will bring up the planet so it's flourishing and fertile and everyone's abilities will light up. So I was directed to channel the rainbow light into my cells, my organs, my entire being, my aura, my chakra system and keep building that. And then after I got to the stage where I felt my, my system was really pulsing with that frequency of it, I was then given this divine message of, okay, now you're a lit up rainbow warrior. You need to channel that into the ocean and the ocean talked to me. She said, I'm depleted in energies. She's like, look, there's gray and black in me. And then that's from the well spills, the pollution um, you know, the nuclear waste in it, all the toxins. And she said, those are low frequencies. And she showed me that they were like these black, gray colors. She said, I need people to gather and to channel rainbow light into me and I will heal. The sky said the same thing to me. The earth said the same thing to me. And then it said, okay, it, they showed me. So the, the, the ETs, the light spirits, they showed me New York and they said, look at all the gray buildings. There's a lot of sad, depressed people here. That's where there's no rainbow light. We need to gather the, the, the light workers together and get them to channel rainbow light into New York or channel rainbow light to where there's war because that's where there's a lot of red and that's where there's a lot of dense energies and we can shift that. We have this divine power to shift that. And it, I've just had this you know, beautiful journey of learning about the rainbow light and how powerful it is and how we can just gather together and channel it into the parts of the planet that needs to be elevated on a frequency level and also healed. And so folks who are listening, myself included, I would like to do this and I will do it. Is it as simple as me closing my eyes, envisioning rainbow light and just sending tons of it up into the sky or into the ocean or into Pachamama, Mother Earth, like that, or is, does it entail more? So what I like to do first is to fill my entire system with rainbow light. And then once I feel this like beautiful high frequency, then I go ahead and I start channeling it into the earth. And we can, you know, we can do that exercise here. I'd like to do that actually at the end of the show so that everybody knows how to do this. And it's, you know, it's just a beautiful feeling. It, it really restores your energy field. And I always say that the physical, our physical is always aligned to our energy field. So it really helps to fill your physical body, just bring it in the light. And, you know, in Atlantis, we would summon light from the sun. We would summon light from the moon because the moon's the yin and the sun's the yang. We would summon light from the cosmos and we would fill ourselves, you know, with that that light so we were constantly in high frequency that's why we didn't age back then that's why we didn't get sick that's why we had abilities because like i said the energy lights up your junk dna it lights up your entire system people are functioning at 15 20 percent of what they should be functioning at because they only have enough energy to function at that um, level so whenever we start bringing the energy 
our systems really, really light up. And it's incredible the divine abilities and gifts that we have. And they're just right there. And they, they are accessible once we start to care about our energy field, once we start to nourish it, and once we start to build it up. Mm -hmm. How many alien races are you connected with? <laughs> not not past lives. Like I, I get that for all of that. That's a <laughs> tall order. But I mean, in communication with right now, uh, in relationship with, and what are the races? I've encountered over 200 races of ETs. Some were very um, rare specimens. One kind of looked like Dino the dinosaur. And he told me, he's like, I'm one of the last of my race. So he, he was telling me that. I encountered, um, and I'm just going through the strangest ones right now. I encountered this one that kind of looked like it was half ele elephant and it went through the dimensions and it had like rainbow light, funny, <laughs> like <laughs> rainbow light pouring out of it. And he told me, he's like, I just danced through dimensions, bringing the light to dimensions. And he was so happy. And he looked like an elephant sort of humanoid being with, and he, he just was prancing around. So, um, I have encountered races that have fallen from the light. I've encountered a lot of um, the races that, you know, are just some, there's some observers. They just, you know, observe time. They don't live in time. Um, wow. You know, it would take me, it would take me days to explain each race. Uh, a lot of the beings that I've encountered, some are just visitors, you know, they're passing through. Um, other ones are really like, okay, so there's this group and they really want the earth to ascend because they said it's going to affect timelines at space and time in the next like billion years. Mm -hmm. So they were saying, okay, it needs to ascend to this point um, because there's ripples. They were showing me these ripples of energy. So that's something I experienced. So they are intervening on a certain level. Also, a lot of races have told me that the reason they don't rescue humanity, and this is a good one too, because I know a lot of people are like, well, why don't just the ETs or angels or light beings come rescue us? We have to ascend and learn our divine power because if they helped us out by rescuing the whole planet, we eventually would get ourselves into the same mess. So we have to learn um, and they do, you know, like they do intervene. They've told me they've intervened to make sure that there wasn't a nuclear war on the planet. They've intervened to make sure that there wasn't, you know, another huge war that would eradicate the planet. So they intervene on certain levels, but they're just watching humanity and they're waiting for us to step into our divine power. And again, they said they will not just come rescue humanity because they will create the same mistakes before eventually. So they have to really step into it and learn to be better. Yeah, hundred percent. Because most of us are back here from Atlantis. Most of us are back here from Lemuria <laughs> and we screwed it up. <laughs> so I think our soul said, give me one more try, you know, just give me one more shot at this. I can do it. Um, I have this sense with you, Sarah, that you are tutored, or mentored by beings not from this planet. Is that true? And if so, who is it that you're in relation with who assists you on your path? You know, I know everyone jumps into the Galactic Federation, but that's not my experience. Um, my experience is these beings that are ancient spirits of light, mm. and they are a council, I call them the, um, ancient council of light they have really helped me out many times and the ets go to them to you know ask for advice so there's different levels of councils so you have this spirit council the one i'm talking about then you have different councils because there are many beings. there's fairies there's elves there's gnomes there's a lot of different beings you know um even the sasquatch i've spoken to them i guess I, I guess you could consider them an ET race. I've considered them an interdimensional race more than an ET race. Mm -hmm. And um, these beings, they all go to the council of light when they really need something, you know, that's very important when it comes to like timelines or stuff like that. So we have the council of light. Then we have the um, ET councils and there's a lot of different ET councils. And then you have 
um, a council that has, you know, one of each race, and then they talk to the council of light. And then there's a lot of branching councils. There's count the council of fairies. Um, there's the angelic council. And then we have like the ETs interacting with the um, spirits too. So we have both the light spirits and the fallen spirits. We have the elementals. Like I said, I could talk about this stuff all for days because there's so much to it. And it's the council of ancient light. What they explained to me about creation is that we were all energy. And then they decided to, we decided to have experience rather than just staying in a more spirit energy form. So we then took, um, we took these forms like spirits. And then from there, we started to go more into the physical and into the, well, first into the ET and then into the physical. So everyone has been ETs, but beyond that, they are spirit. That's what they were, sh they were showing me. And then people got caught in a reincarnation cycle on the planet and forgot who they were. So they, when I wanted to come to earth, they guided me. They said, it's going to be an intense experience to be down there because everyone, a lot of people are not awake and to who they truly are. They're these spirits and they have all this divine power, but they're lost in this, you know, cycle of reincarnation and they forgot their divine power and their divinity. So they told me, they said, you know, if it's up to us, we would prefer that you stay here. And I said, no, I'm going to go to earth. And they were like, we support you then. And we will help guide you while you're down there. So every so long, you know, they, they show me, they show me the, like, they show me this, the divine symphony. They say to me that we are in a distorted symphony right now. And there's this divine symphony. And that's when we ascend into the, what I call the golden age or new earth It's because we will recognize and acknowledge and channel our divinity, our divine power. And then as we start to, because sickness, age and all of that, it all comes from a distorted energy field. And I was shown that when we, when we bring in that divine energy, that's going to, that's going to fix that distorted frequency in us and bring us into that divine symphony, that divine frequency. And then once we do so, that's where we're going to step into the golden age as more and more people wake up to that. So they've been guiding me on this. They've given me so much information. Um, a while back, they were like really, really covering the topic of children. They said, okay, the awakened community, the true light workers need to channel rainbow light to the children because they really need it right now. And um, that'll help to heal the consciousness of the children on this planet, which has been exploited and harmed on many levels. So they give me a lot of information like that on my journey. As I'm listening to you, I keep thinking about these are kind of old movies. I don't even remember the name, but in it, like there's a kid in high school and there's a woman who's a mom and something happens and magically they switch bodies and the woman is living her life through the high school student. The high school student all of a sudden is a mom not knowing what she's doing. <laughs> and I'm listening to you and thinking, I want one of those with you. I want to live your life. Like you, <laughs> I, I would take a day, even though after a day I might want more. <laughs> I, like this would be amazing to have this level of connection and communication. And I know as a healer, I've experienced you you're very gifted. Like it's no joke, you know, who you're working with and why you came here. So anyway, just to the powers that be, if there's a possibility, I'm, I'm down for it. If Sarah is, and then we could switch back. <laughs> <laughs> so, it's, you know, go ahead. No, please. My I was going to say, cheer. you know what, portals, that's another thing they showed me, portals. They said that we need to open more light portals on the planet so that the, the higher energies can channel through and replenish the planet. So this is something, so I will also, you know, at the end of the interview, remind me to do an exercise on how we can open chat portals up to the heavenly energies so we can channel more light energy into our lives. And I call it heavenly energy and into the planet. Oh my God. Done. 
So everybody out there, remind me. <laughs> I will remember. <laughs> I promise I will remember. This is beautiful. Yes, yes, yes. Because everybody can start to change right now. And I like that. Give them tools. What for us, us humanoids out here, us actually galactic humanoids, what alien races are going to play a really important part in extraterrestrial contact going forward? And I would also say are going to play a really big part in us, right? Ascending, connecting, having benevolent connection, all of it. Who can we look forward to meeting with soon? Ooh. <laughs> so one, we, wow, this is a big one. This is a big one. And it's a big one because so once we start stepping into that divine power, doing a lot of that soul searching and lighting our systems up, we will connect. So I would say while everyone's like, okay, they're waiting for one particular alien race I would say guess who is going to create that um who's going to create that connection it's going to be us when we light ourselves up more we're going to be the ones to see them you know I can tell you from personal experience I see ETs and I see these beings because I have you know lit myself up with energy so we're going to we're going to be the ones that create the first official contact as more and more people wake up they're going to light up and they're going to start seeing these beings because this is how they showed it to me people most people are in this frequency they're right here when you start to elevate your frequency there's that joining of the frequencies in resonance and then you start to interact with them so really you know always the angels tell me the hosts of the realms that they always say to me they say we're waiting on humanity to wake up and elevate their energy so that we can connect to them. We're waiting for them up here. We know that they have to come up here. So, you know, they will come down into our reality to, I know I've read about a lot of the experiences of people who they had these beautiful spiritual or supernatural experiences where ETs have helped heal them or angels have helped them out. You know, if they have had car wrecks or things like that. So really, they do intervene at times, but really, it's us. We're the ones who will create that contact as we elevate our energy field. We're, we're, we will realize that not only will we contact our, our ET brothers and sisters and all the angelics and the hosts of the realms, there's also another gift. And I haven't really talked about this. And do you know the pyramids, right, in Egypt? Well, the pyramids, there's pyramids in the different planets, and it's that ancient system of it where all the planets were inhabited. It's this ancient system. So whenever we uh, we light up ourselves, the energy is going to channel in and light up that ancient pyramid system that's connected to many moons, planets, and the entire system. And it's going to light everything back up like a motherboard. I was shown that the technology of the pyramids ancient technology that you're supposed to channel energy to the pyramids and that lights the technology up and then it's going to take us out of this realm and it's going to elevate the the earth so that you can see all of the realms of the unseen and it's going to connect us to all the planets and i was showed that like not all that long ago so there's a lot of this divine ancient technology and they're trying to physically logically de decode what it means it's ancient technology that we light up with our energy field. As for when it comes to ET rate, there's a lot of different ET races that are connecting with people on some level, specifically children. Mm -hmm. They are very interested in elevating the children. When I was a child, I was taken into the ET ships all the time and we would speak telepathically. And then um, in a later age, not all that long ago, I would go into ET ships and download my knowledge of life on this planet to the children, the ET hybrids, by the way. And when I asked why they were doing this hybrid hybridization program, they said that people had their energy fields were so shut down. It shut down their DNA. So they were actually bringing in lit up DNA so that into these children so that these children would be 
connected back to the energies of nature and the energies of the realms and the energies. Um, and they would actually be able to, to anchor those energies onto the planet. So by putting that, those energies via the DNA into the children, those children would anchor light into the planet. So there was quite a big hybridization wow. program that was run for a long, long time with that. Um, that was what they were doing to bring in the light energy and anchor it back into people to light up their DNA. Cause they said that the DNA on the planet had been very, very distorted due to trauma toxins to a lot of, um, you know, just a lot of dense energies. So they were bringing it, the light DNA back into the children to, um, yeah, to anchor in the light into the planet. Plus our DNA has been altered. I mean, throughout our history, we've had, for instance, the Anunnaki who came in. And- Such a big subject, yeah. So Anunnaki there's like a, a war between the higher beings that are bringing in the light DNA. And this is a, this is a can of worms to open here because... And it's, it's like, okay, don't jump into your affair, but there are definitely beings that feed on our soul energy and feed on the planet and they are falling beings. They have fell from the light of the divine and they use humanity's energy batteries. So they want people to stay, um, you know, as cattle, as sheep, they want people to stay shut down. So that, because when you light up, you realize what's happening and you see Mm -hmm. it and you're Mm -hmm. like, oh, I understand why there's sickness. I understand why there's wars. I understand, oh, it's these beings and it's all our unhealed karma and trauma that attracted them and allows them. And then they're also feeding off of that. So there's this codependency relationship when we're unawakened and we have those dense energies with these beings. But also, you know, it's, it's scary as that sounds to some people. We have that divine power. Any moment we can just like, bring in the light energy, ascend our frequency field, and those beings have to leave, you know, or we transmute them. So I, um, yeah, they've been altering. So I was shown this, they've been altering. So there's like a battle between, like I said, the, the ones that are higher frequency, the ET races that are, you know, what I call in alignment with the divine who are bringing in the light DNA. And then there's also the ones who are altering who have altered um humanity to try to keep them shut off so that they can stay energy batteries yes yes and you know what i love what you're saying i do a shamanic practice every morning i go in the backyard i first thing i put my feet in the grass i let my roots go deep into mother earth i bring up her energy i i have a real relationship with her and i love what you're saying because i want to add aspects of this to my practice including the lighting up from inside and including, you know, pouring this rainbow light into the places and spaces where it's needed. So I want to ask you about shamanism. Um, When you and I had a conversation on the phone a couple of months ago, you brought up that you were going to a ceremony and you participate in journeys. And I wasn't sure if you facilitated or what that was, but this is near and dear to my heart. And so I would love to know about your life in the shamanic realm. It's amazing. So I learned, um, I learned from my shaman how to serve combo, how to do combo. I love combo and I have helped him in different ceremonies. So we do facilitate them. I do them myself. I actually, you know, I am a bit of a wild scientist. I have like a thousand herbs. I have all sorts of superfoods and stuff. So I'm constantly making mixtures and, you know, taking them because the herbs have such high frequencies. So it, they're really great at helping us to stay in higher frequencies. And I just, I love frog medicine because for me, it's like, in my opinion, the frogs are amazing transmuters. They pull in that dense energy and they just transmute it. So when we connect to the frog medicine, it pulls those poisonous dense energies out of us and the consciousness of the frogs absorb it and then transmute it for us, which is Okay, so you're not talking magical. about you're not talking about bufo when you say frog medicine, you're talking Cambo. about combo. Yes. Okay, like the I, little I, yes. Marks. Yes. And I've just found it to be incredibly amazing at healing people. Um, I've heard I this. I want to ask you because ah. I've done many things, but I haven't done combo yet. And the only reason, call me a baby, I'll accept it. 
because <laughs> every time I hear you have to hoof back two liters of water in the first, you know, whatever minutes you're there, and then how uncomfortable it is until you purge. Um, I don't know, man, that just is such a turnoff to me. So talk to me about that, how your perception is different than what I'm hearing and thinking it might be like. I think a lot of it is about letting go. I think that people who have a bad time, I, I don't ever have a bad time. I have a great time. Actually, I talk to the mess. <laughs> you know? I talked to it and I'm like, I love you. And it's like, I love you. I'm just going to help your body out and your energy. Uh -huh. So I did, I've done ayahuasca and I was, it didn't do anything to me that I was like, why? And she was like, well, you're already connected to, to the divine energy side. But she's, she was so funny. She said to me, she's like, but for those who are disconnected, she's like, and those who are like negative to, to, to themselves and others, she's like, I teach them a really good lesson. <laughs> she's, she's like, I make them feel the pain that they have put others through. She's like, I, she's like, I'm not going to do that to you. Cause she's like, you're already connected. Mm -hmm. Um, but I talk to the medicine. I think it really is about letting go. You know, sometimes we, I think it's really interesting. We get comfortable with our fears or our paranoias or things <laughs> we just get. And so we're, we get, even though it's not a nice place to be in, we get comfortable in that place. And then, so it's really about letting it go. And so I do this practice where I feel the medicine coming on and I'm like, thank you, Claire, what you need. I love you. Thank you for doing this sacred work with me. And I have a great experience. Wow. I will say that. So I, th I don't think you, I don't think you would necessarily have like that intense experience. I think it really it's people who have a lot to clear and that are very unawakened that have like <laughs> the experience because it's the same as the ayahuasca, the frog medicine's like, okay, well here, you're going to clear all this. But what's really nice about Cambo for me, it doesn't last more than like 15 minutes. And I've also self-served combo. I have a line up my leg hair um, where I have done like two dots every single day because it's great for stem cells. It's great for to rejuvenate your body, to kill off viruses, to strengthen your immune system. I know for men, it's good for testosterone. I know that you can heal lots and lots of things with it. Like cancer, it's been very helpful to cancer um, patients any sort of autoimmune disease, um, Epstein-Barr virus, it really is one of the best medicines for that. Wow. But um, I, like I said, just go into it and, you know, just thank the medicine and you'll have a good time. And you do have like 15 minutes and it's, for some people, it can be, like I said, it's the people who have a lot of dense energy. So it can be really intense, but it's also like, what I call instantaneous shadow work. So it's like, it brings, it literally brings up all that energy at once. You feel it, it feels horrible, but then it's like gone and it's gone. It's completely mm. transmuted from your system. And then mm. I ha I don't know one person that has done Campbell that has told me they don't like the results after everyone's like, wow, I feel more heart connected. I feel like emotionally better and I have better thoughts. So it's, it's an incredible medicine. And you absolutely have to do two liters or can you do less? I mean, I myself, I'm, I'm a very like small girl, so I cannot fit two liters down. So I just drink as much as I can. And then when I'm, my system's like, you got to stop. I just stop. And I fared well doing that. And, okay. and yeah, so I, you know, everyone's like, oh, you need to drink up to a gallon and I can't, I'm sorry, I can't fit a gallon of water. I can't fit a half a gallon of water. I can fit a quarter of a gallon of water. That's about it. Okay. That's still a lot. It's still a lot. Okay. I'm sure it does. I guess I just drink as much as you can and you're good. You'll be fine. And so your awareness, Sarah, of the indigenous people, the medicine people, the shamans, yeah. What is your connection there? Do you have a connection with the shamanic world, with the indigenous world? Yes. Yeah, so um, one, I'm part Blackfoot Native American on my dad's side. Apparently I heard that they're super, one of the most super magic only apparently Blackfoot Natives apparently have like 
gifts, you know, but it's really interesting. My whole experience with this, right? So I was told that, you know, the Native Americans were very connected to the energies of the earth and they would actually cultivate it to be in higher frequencies and that's not happening anymore. And that's why we have a lot of the land that just seems, you know, I just took a road trip not long ago. Actually, I talked to you when I was on that road trip. <laughs> yes. Yeah. And I was talking because I talked to the land and I talked to the, to the mm -hmm. land just like I talked to you. I talk to trees, I talk to, you know, all sorts of things. And the land was saying, I'm sad and depressed. And it's really, it's really interesting, you know, because when I was a child and I was in America before my mom took me to France, I remember everything being way more lush. And I remember just having just this glorious feeling from when we, because we traveled across the United States. I remember having this glorious, like, Ooh, kind of like soaring energetic feeling and I noticed that that's leaving the lands and the lands were telling me we're polluted nobody is like um everybody's you know in denser energies so we're suffering and they showed me that the Native Americans would really respect and honor and send love to the land and cultivate it and that would make the land happy and when the land's happy guess what that affects us we are less sick we age less um, we also, the women were more, more fertile. There's also the, 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 the fields and crops are more fertile. So as we've lost that, we've lost these things. And if, if there's land that is in a high frequency and you put a depressed person on it to live on it, they actually will start to heal because they'll take on the frequency of the land. So with the land being sad and depressed, it, because it feels, I think people don't realize that the ocean feels, that these rivers and lakes feel, that the trees and land feel, the sky feels. They don't, they've forgotten this because they're so disconnected. So, you know, not only channeling rainbow light, but channeling just love into the land is really important right now into the oceans and skies because of the pollution we've really hurt the planet. And I was told that the Native Americans were so in tune with the frequencies, they knew how to cultivate them, respect and honor the land. And that the land is actually rebelling right now. In America, there's the land is rebelling across the earth. The land is rebelling because it has not been honored, respected and loved. And it, it, they were showing me that the Native Americans are offshoot, this is very interesting, of that you know how they were told the red people, they're off shoot of the martians the red people from mars that they were linked all the way back from mars and so that was really quite interesting because i have a lot of memory of mars and they were telling me oh remember how and then the the native americans have this knowledge in their dna and they're you know we were talking about dark forces earlier trying to keep the planet well it's so interesting how a lot of the tribes that had sacred knowledge of the lands and sacred knowledge of healing has have all been suppressed or murdered and completely destroyed because those dark forces want that knowledge to completely be eradicated from this planet. And that's why the Native Americans have went through so much trauma because there are literal dark forces that wanted to destroy them because of all the knowledge that they have. And I can tell you from my personal experience, it's been a journey um, of dealing with people who are infected by those dark forces of being them being very aggressive or negative to me for nothing. So I'm aware of what I, you know, I was going up against when I came into this incarnation, which hasn't, like I said, been the easiest journey, but I'm so grateful to the angels and all the beautiful beings for helping me. But yes, the Native Americans, you know, they know, knew how to heal the land. They knew how to work with the energies of the land. And I really feel that we need to step back into that. We really, really do. So a lot of my journey is about embracing, you know, they would, they could make rain. They do rain dances so they can make rain. The elements listen to them because they respected and honored the elements. And I have that effect. You know, I talked about how, I have weather and anomalies and all of that. I talk to the elements and they talk to me and I'm like, I love you. And they love me. And they're like, we will help you or we will do things because we feel that love from you. There is the four elements. The fifth element is love. 
And love is the element that the four elements listen to. And so in Native American culture, they knew that they could heal people. They knew that they could make rainstorms. They knew they could affect, you know, reality. And that's something that I'm bringing back into, um, I'm, I'm bringing that out onto a public, into the public because they need to know these things. And I, I have an amazing Native American shaman. He's the one who, who I do combo with, right? And he sees spirits and he talks to them very, very similar. And um, yeah, it's the thing that I, it's, it's, there's a lot of information from the Native Americans that I feel needs to be embraced when it comes to healing the planet and working with the energies. Oh my God. Preach into the choir. I am <laughs> so with you. I really am. You're hitting on things I am going to be talking about in Mexico City. I am so excited to hear you say this. It just feels like mega confirmation. And I know this, these very dismissed people, these primitive people, right? Who have been, oh, they've had their land stolen from them. I mean, it's disgusting, right? What's happening and what has happened, especially in history. And yet they've always had the answer. They have had the secret. They live the secret. It's part of their culture to heal, to be connected with the mountains and the sky and the weather and the mm -hmm. to blow prayers into leaves and to be connected with the galactic. This, they wouldn't be having this conversation because it's so pedestrian to them. This is what they've known since the beginning of time. So yes to all of that. It's so important, This these sacred people. To me, they're very sacred. And um, I'm so interested in your shaman, but that's an off offline conversation we could have. <laughs> um, you're getting me intrigued. I want to ask you, it says in your bio about quantum leaping and time travel into alternate realities. Wow, that's pretty cool. Um, do you have examples or stories about this you can share? Yes, I do. So quantum leaping, um, I have... I have jumped into bodies and back when I was in Atlantis, I've jumped into a body when I was in Victorian times. So I look kind of like dressing Victorian. Um, I've also jumped in the future. I had one experience where I was dealing with something and I knew my future self knew how to get through it, but the present self couldn't. So we would talk about switch up. The future me jumped into me and the present me jumped into the future it was really interesting that I got the knowledge I needed to get through that. And I have so many quantum leap experiences where I'm just like, I have, um, I had this person that I really loved passed away. Well, I jumped back to my body while I was sitting next to them when they were alive and spoke to them. So I was able to jump and do that. I also have this, these experiences. Um, I think my first one, I was like, 15 or 16 like I said don't ever don't ever trust my timelines because it's like I'm out of time <laughs> um all the time I don't live in time so I'm like back and forth but I was I was in somebody else's body and I've had this happen I remember and this is this is such so vivid to me like yesterday I remember being in so I was in France and then I remember being in this girl's body in New York in a trunk as crazy as that sounds and she was trying to get out of the trunk and she couldn't it's like then I came in I found my way out of the trunk she was in some warehouse car in a warehouse somewhere then I found my way out of the trunk and then I ran and got out of there and once she got to safety I suddenly was out she was back in her body and I was back in my body so I've had experiences like that a lot I can tell you information that I've picked up of jumping into bodies in people that that are in the military. Like there's things, I know a lot of stuff. I will say that I know many secrets. Um, I know. Wait, let me ask you, are they aware? Are people cognizant that you're in their body or have they vacated while you take over? Hmm, you know, I had um, somebody sent me send me the series Quantum Leap. Do you remember yes. that series? Yes. And well, I, I, that's my experience. It's like once I do my assignment, then I'm back. <laughs> but um, 
that I don't think she was necessarily aware that that was happening. Mm. I do know that when I went to some deeper stuff like the Bohemian Grove, which is a lot more darker because I was, I did this, I think I was like 26 at the time. I was like, oh, I'm going to go see what's happening, you know, in all of these places. Wow. Very intense experiences because I jumped into, I jumped into some bodies there and it's really intense for me to speak about because what I saw was really intense and definitely not good, but, um, I learned a lot of things. And then I was able to also jump into people in underground bases and bases, like, and even around elite leaders and even into other realms. So I do that quite a bit. And the information I have gathered is both, I would say, light and dark. Specifically, yes. the Bohemian Grove was a very dark experience. And I know exactly what they're doing there. They're using soul energy. And it's like not a lot of, you know, it's not something a lot of people want to hear because a lot of people like focus in on the light. But I do think that we really need to do the shadow work and use our divine abilities to really shift all of this. That's going to be the solution. As for my, the other one, so we said quantum leap and the other one was, yes, time traveling. Oh, one time I had so much, I had like a reel go in front of me and I was suddenly like, I was shown that the fern, uh, this is really interesting. You know, the, the plant, the fern, yes. you call it plant. Mm -hmm. Apparently the fern was created. It's so some of these plants and animals are genetic computers that hold information. Okay. From billions of years. So I was shown that the fern was the oldest plant to ever exist that had the entire spectrum of information on a vibrational level. Wow. That's fascinating. That really is. Yes. And never seen it was fern, created to imagine. hold information. Yes. yes. So that was a uh, interesting experience. They showed me like a lion. A lion is actually a divine computer system that protects the information in it. That's why it's a lion. So it's protecting the information from certain beings and entities that would want to destroy it. That's why it purrs the high frequencies of, yes, I was shown that. I showed so, so many different things. But to go back to time traveling, I had, this is where I picked up a lot of this information is from time traveling. And I learned how to um, um, time travel as in get the information of how to do that. So you need a burst of energy. So it's always, if you want to shift your timeline and you want to actually time travel from one timeline to another, let's say you are sick and dying, you can actually use the energy, pull in the energy of a thunderstorm and then use that energy in so kind of a burst, which will put you into a different timeline. I did that when I was dying years and years and years ago because I looked at these the timeline I was on and I was like, no, this is not a timeline where I'm going to survive. So I took burst of energy. I went literally into electric storms in the rain and sat there and absorbed the energy from the rain and used that to create a shift into a different timeline where I healed and I survived. Are you saying you sat outside during the thunderstorm, not inside to harness the outside? Energy? Yeah. So I, cause I didn't have enough energy to do it myself. So I need, I knew I needed energy to basically shift my timeline. And so I went and I, um, went into the rain and just sat in the rain and let it charge me. And there was such a big lightning storm. And I remember when it happened, I kept pulling in the energy, pulling in the energy and telling myself to jump to a timeline where I was going to heal. And I felt the timeline completely. Like I time traveled to another timeline. I will say this. I know about the Philadelphia experiment. I actually traveled there, um, the Montauk project. They used, they did it during a lightning storm because they were pulling the energy of the lightning to create the burst for time travel energy. They needed that energy. So to time travel, you need energy. So the more that I charge myself with energy, the more that I have time traveling experiences. And I actually teach people how to do it nowadays because I've been able to, with my experiences, I know how it works. So if I want to shift a timeline, I just gather and time travel, I gather. If I want to focus on going back to, let's say, my life in Egypt, 
I bring in that energy, I cultivate it. And then I use that burst of energy to kind of propulse me. I guess you could say like you, you know, how could you, for a rocket, you need the fuel to get the rocket up and going. Well, you need the energy blast to propulse you back into that timeline of where you live back then. And I've also used it to go into the future. So there's a couple of different timelines right now that are kind of like this for humanity. So I've done a lot of exploration exploration of that time traveling too. There are the, I also met, I ran into the men in black mm. <laughs> time traveling. They don't like, to, they don't like, um, they don't like time distortions. And I did create some time distortions at one point, which I'm careful not to do anymore. That was an experience. That's what I was thinking as I was listening to you is, Every one of these experiences, whether you heal a past aspect of you or you're emerging into something wholly different, new timeline, seeing the past, experience, dimension, it must inform you, the the now timeline, Sarah, so that when you come back, you must be different. You must be bringing new information, new adventures, and- yes constantly changing yeah and, and not only you this, but every connection to you meaning right so it's a constant it's so thank you for saying that because it's a constant it's I say constant ex, constant experience that's what it is and I just I love it you know I would if we I just see it in the spirit realm it would be kind of boring us on some level at some point so it's I'm very happy that we have a lot of the physical creation because, you know, it's also here. I think people forgot, you know, they're so struggling out there. They forgot. It's just this beautiful creation mm-hmm. for experience, you know, because <laughs> otherwise, like I said, we get bored up in this spirit realm. Yeah. Wow. Thank you for that. I There are no words for how many other questions. This could be a series <laughs> for real. And that's a good sign because you pique my curiosity and you're sharing (laughs) such unusual things, although I'm aware of them. I just don't always experience them. I want to honor this beautiful offering that you suggested. And specifically, you said um, to do when you would lead us through something regarding the rainbow light and also the heavenly energy. Yes. Okay, are we ready? Born ready. (laughs) Okay, here we go. So I want everyone to relax. Close your eyes. What we're going to do is we're going to tell our system to elevate itself in frequency. So we're going to do this by visualizing a golden light tunnel. And we're going to visualize flying up that golden light tunnel into the higher energies. As you do this exercise, you should feel tingling. You should feel the light pouring into you. Now we're going to charge our system with the rainbow light. So we're going to visualize rainbow light pouring into our cells, our organs, and our entire body and system. And if you don't mind, keep talking us through this when there's too much silence on radio, uh, sometimes another show will start playing. Perfect, will do. So keep channeling that rainbow light into your system till you feel tingles.
And then what I want you to do is I want you to go ahead and I want you to start channeling rainbow light into the sky, the oceans, and the entire planet. And you can also focus on a city if you would like. You can even focus on your own home. You can focus on people you love. Just visualize channeling them rainbow light. I'm channeling rainbow light right now into the center of the earth. Keep focused on where you want to channel that light. It's very important to bring your focus to this. And usually I would give a space of around two minutes for each exercise, but I know we're doing a radio show right now. <laughs> so I'm going to continue guiding you guys through this on a much quicker level. But at home, like I said, use two minutes, do the do the golden light tunnel for two minutes, then the rainbow light into your body for two minutes. And then of course, after that, where you're channeling light, you could spend as much time as you need to. Intuitively, I just always read my system and it'll tell me, oh, spend, you know, sometimes like 20, 30 minutes doing this, channeling light into the earth or the sky. So I just listen to that. So next we're going to bring in the heavenly energies and I really love this and I just do it curled up on the couch or curled up in bed. You can, you don't have to sit in a meditative position. You can do this even at work. Um, you can do this anywhere. Like I said, my favorite position is like curled up like a little kid. <laughs> so what I do is I visualize this portal open it into heaven and then I just visualize the heavenly energies pouring into my entire system. And it just gives you this very elevated, beautiful heart opening experience as we build this energy. It makes me happy too. If you really are depressed, sad, sick, have negative thoughts, you keep building the light in you and that will go away. So I love doing these techniques because it helps with this so much. It makes me happy like a child. Now what you can do is you can channel that heavenly energy onto the whole planet because we really need to bring those energies in right now. There we go. That's the exercise. And you guys can practice that at home at any time. And thank you, Debbie. I really enjoy doing this stuff. <laughs> uh, this is great. This is so great. We'll have to have you back next year because, um, yeah, there's so many other conversations I'd love to have with you. I want to ask you and a couple of questions. So the first one is you're speaking at Conscious Life Expo, February 9th through the 12th, 2024 at the LAX Hilton, that's in Los Angeles. Um, I know you've been there before and you're an often speaker and panelist and so forth. What are you talking about this next year? Ooh, so you know what? I am going to get people to activate themselves, their entire system. So this is just, you know, these exercises are the tip of the iceberg. I'm going to get people to light up. I'm also going to bring in the Oracle, the Oracle of the dimensions, and it has all this knowledge. It's going to give me a lot of divine information. I've already spoken with it about what we need to do to help out the children on the planet, to help the, the feminine heal on the planet, to help heal the planet. A lot of information that will be coming through there. I'm also going to bring in the ETs and light beings again, which I did last year and everybody loved it. And I loved it. It was the first time doing it on a, you know, doing it with a lot of people in the audience. I'm used to working one-on-ones doing that. So I'm very excited. And of course, there's going to be a lot of my friends there and you're going to be there, right? 
<laughs> I am there. I am there. Yes. I'm moderating a panel. You're on. And I introduce speakers. Yes, right. I wouldn't miss it for the world. It's one of the greatest events every it year. Is. It is like your massive download of the greatest speakers in one place. And I just want to say, I know you have to finish. Folks Come who are join listening. Us. Yes, join us. <laughs> yes. And I'm going Come to join have... Us. The link will be in the show notes. So go ahead. You can click there to get your tickets. Don't miss it. Come see Sarah. It's really worth it. So please continue, my dear. Yeah, it's good. I love it. You know, it's it's like a lot of people are very gifted that join together. And it's I, I've been there. I've been one for years. I've been there for years, every single year, mostly. And I just I really quite love it. It's amazing. I look forward to it every single year. So come and join us. But. I'm happy because you're going to be the moderator. Literally, you get to ask me more questions. I, do. <laughs> I cannot wait. And we're going to deep dive people because we're talking about ET origins. And Ooh, yeah, yeah, like I'm already all over it. And I'm going to mail you stuff. We'll be connected again in January. I'll, I'll mail you stuff. Um, so we're definitely on the same page. I'm so excited. And so Sarah, this is Dare to Dream. What do you next dare to dream? God, I can't wait to hear this answer. What are your future dreams and goals? Oh, you know, I think that they used to be, a, I, I'm a Taurus and I like achieving things. And I think that, that when I was younger, I was like, oh, this, that, you know, I've achieved so much in life. And I think that my biggest goal right now with everything happening in the world and my, my biggest prayer, you might say, I'm not even sure if that's the right word for it, is going to be right now humanity awakening to their heart and their soul. That's very important to me. It's almost like I want to cry. You know, and that's the most important. And I, I love people. I don't want to see them suffering anymore. And I don't want to, you know, I don't want them to, to, to be in war and be in chaos. And I, I'm hoping that they, and I have faith that they define the same the this, this same divinity within themselves that I have found within myself. Mm-hmm. Beautiful prayer. And people can find you at sarahradams.com. Is yes. there any other place you want to send them or anything you want to tell us about that you're offering? So I right now have limited spaces that I'm doing for my multidimensionality packages because Again, I'm doing some work. I'm not going to publicly state it, but we talked about this at the beginning of the show. So I won't be as available. And I'm also limiting my sessions that I'm doing one-on-ones because of this other big project I'm working on right now. And so if you guys want to book, you know, a session with me, go ahead and do it now. Because like I said, this coming year, I'm going to be so full of work. I'm not going to be able to do as many one-on-ones or even teach this, the multidimensionality um, work one-on-ones that I do and I it's so I do 40 sessions of one-on-ones with people it's so in-depth I teach you about everything literally that I know because in my experience it's like you know it's like teach people how to do what you do rather than having them rely on you that's very important for me it's like empowering others to be in a state of multi-dimensionality it's very important to me as a spiritual teacher. Hmm, beautiful. So folks who want to connect, sarahradams.com. Sarah, thank you so much for being on Dare to Dream today. I really enjoyed it. And other folks, if you would like tickets to the Conscious Life Expo, and as you know, I highly recommend you do, it will be in the show notes. And I end today's show with this quote, embrace the power within you, for you are a multidimensional healer. Through awakened consciousness, you'll see miracles and angels, explore the supernatural and past lives, journey through remote viewing, quantum leap through time, and unveil the limitless realms of your soul. Subscribe to this number one transformation conversation, Dare to Dream with Debbie Dashinger, Leave a comment. I read them all. I appreciate you all so much for helping me in the show and being on this Ascension journey. Next week on the show will be the amazing Chris Rael, and he's going to be talking about cosmic frequency. Chris is a spiritual specialist, a noeticist, 
and a cosmic guide. Remember folks, don't just dare to dream, dare to pull all your angel energy and your rainbow light into the earth, into places and spaces you see on this planet and in humanity that need it. That is the blessed work you could do. It costs nothing. It takes five minutes of our time. I promise I will start doing it too. And thank you so much for caring and having such big shoulders to be on this planet at this time. We came here to do the great work.